Hey guys, it's Chris at Highland Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned your subscription. And of course, to everyone who's watching, if you enjoy this video or get something out of it, I would appreciate it if you would click that thumbs up button. And then of course, if you would like to go a little bit further and help to support my channel financially, you can visit eGuitarPlants.com. There's a link in the description below, or you can visit the Highline Guitars merch store, which is displayed below the description for this video. Either way, any purchase you make will help support the channel, plus you'll be getting something in return. Oh, and then if you would like, you can click that thanks button down below and leave a tip in the amount that you would like. What I'm going to talk about today is a question that was posed by a viewer. And the question has to do with the use of one of these tools. It's called a fret rocker. Now, it's kind of an interesting question, and it's one that I think a lot of folks contemplate whenever they first use a fret rocker. So I think to answer the question, what I'm gonna have to do is bring in a little closer and show you how the fret rocker works. What we use a fret rocker for is to locate and identify either high frets or spots on a fret that are higher than the adjacent frets. And the reason we do this is because a high fret or a high spot on a fret can cause string buzz when you play the guitar. So the way the fret rocker works is, as you can see, it's a thick piece of steel that has sides that are different lengths and these sides have been precision ground absolutely flat. So when you start out up here at the nut, you would use the longest side and you would straddle three frets at a time. And then you would try to rock the fret. And if you can rock the fret, what that's gonna mean is that that center fret is acting like a pivot point. So the fret rocker will rock side to side or back and forth like a teeter-totter. And you'll hear a slight clicking sound as you do it. Now, as luck would have it, these frets are all the same uh, height. They're all perfectly level, so the fret rocker isn't gonna rock. But if it did rock and I heard that clicking sound, that would indicate that this fret in the middle between these two adjacent frets is either higher or it has a high spot and that spot could cause fret buzz. So we will do this to identify the high spot or the high fret. Then we can address it by just spot leveling that one fret. And typically uh, we use like a three quarter file and we use that to just slightly reduce that high fret or the high spot on the fret until the fret rocker no longer rocks. And then we'll move up the fretboard as we do this. And then occasionally as the frets get closer and closer together, we have to switch to one of the other length sides so that all we are covering are three frets at a time. You can't cover two, you can't cover four. It has to be three. So the question that the viewer asked was, when you find a high spot, and your fret rocker is clicking, how do you know if this center fret is high or is it possible that one or both of the adjacent frets is lower? Well, that kind of makes sense. It's sort of a philosophical question, like which came first, the chicken or the egg? Of course, we know it's the egg because chickens evolved from dinosaurs and dinosaurs laid eggs. At any rate, when I was first leveling frets, I had that same concern. Was I finding a high fret or were the two adjacent frets or one of the adjacent frets lower than that center fret? Well, in truth, as time passed and I did, got more experienced at doing fret work, I began to realize it doesn't matter because what you're trying to do when you level the frets is reduce them until they are all the same height as your lowest fret. So obviously that's gonna beg the question, does that mean you're gonna have to remove a tremendous amount of fret material in order to get all your frets down to the same height as the lowest fret? In theory, yes, if you did a really bad job of installing the frets. 
and ended up with one fret that's way lower than the other frets, then yeah, you'd have to remove a lot of material. What it comes down to is you have to do a really good job. You have to follow the best practices when it comes to installing your frets so that they are all as close to the same height as they can possibly get. That way when you use your fret leveling beam to get them all level, you're not going to have that issue of having to grind off a lot of material to get all the frets down to the same height. So what are those best practices? Well, it actually begins before you start to do any work on building your guitar. It begins with the selection of the wood that you're going to use for the fretboard. It has to be very hard and very dense. That's why we typically use East Indian rosewood, ebony, and hard maple. There are other woods that you can use, but before you select a different species, you want to check the Jenka hardness of the wood. And that Jenka hardness should be similar to what ebony and rosewood and maple is. If it's too soft and if it isn't dense enough, when you press or pound the frets in, you could be actually pushing down the wood resulting in a fret being lower than the adjacent frets. So you want to make sure the fretboard has very hard density. The next thing you need to do is when you radius the fretboard, you need to make sure that that radius is generated consistently from one end to the other. And it doesn't matter whether it's a consistent radius or if it's a conical radius. It needs to be a consistent radius in terms of how it's formed from one end to the other. If there are any high spots or low spots, that's going to translate to your frets, uh, causing some of the frets to be higher and others to be lower. So you want to make sure that's consistent. And then when you install the frets, you want to make sure that if you're tapping them in with a fret hammer that you're using consistent force with each fret. If you're pressing them in, you want to make sure that you use consistent pressure to press them down into the wood. You don't want to apply more pressure on one fret than you would another fret because that could cause issues with fret, uh, frets being at different heights. Also, when you uh, radius the fret wire, you want to make sure that that radius is going to match the radius of the fretboard itself. And there are folks who have different philosophies about that. Some folks like to radius it to be a little bit tighter than the actual radius of the fretboard. Uh, personally, I found that makes no difference whatsoever. I always make sure that the radius of the fret wire matches the radius of the fretboard. That can ensure that I'm not going to have any high spots or uh, spots along the fret where it doesn't seat firmly with the surface of the fretboard. So if you've done all that correctly, when you go to actually level the frets, what you're going to be doing is scraping the top of the frets. And that's the, it's the sandpaper that's going to be doing all the work as you level the frets. And what you're looking for is to make sure that each fret has its surface, the very top center of it, scraped. If you notice a fret that doesn't appear to be touched by the uh, sandpaper that's attached to the fret leveling beam, that means you've got a, a low spot. So you have to keep working until that low spot is getting touched by the sandpaper. Now, hopefully, if you've done everything correctly, that's not going to happen. Or if it does, it's not going to be that big of a deal. But if you notice that you're having to do a lot of leveling work back and forth over and over and over in order to get all your frets down to that one low fret, you may have an issue and you may want to reconsider uh, or you may want to consider reinstalling your frets. Pull all the old frets out, re-level the fretboard and uh, re-radius it and then reinstall all the frets to try to get it done correctly. That's where experience pays dividends. Once you've done it a number of times, you begin to learn what you need to do in order to ensure that all your frets are going to be the same height. Once the fret leveling work has been done with the fret leveling beam, you can check the quality of your work with your fret rocker by checking them three frets at a time, working your way up the fretboard. And if you find any slight high spots, you can address those usually like with a three corner file, just by doing a little bit of spot leveling. However, that's optional. You'll find that once you've had experience doing fret work and doing the leveling work in particular, 
you probably aren't going to have to double check the work with your fret rocker because all you have to do is look at the, the tops of all your frets. And if they appear dull, like they've been scraped by the sandpaper that's on your leveling beam, you'll know that all the surfaces are level with one another for all the frets. But if you still see a fret that's shiny or maybe has a spot that's shiny, that means that fret is lower and hasn't been touched by the sandpaper on your fret leveling beam. So you would have to continue with the leveling work until that fret has that same scratch pattern from the uh, abrasive sandpaper on the fret leveling beam. At that point, you'll know that all your frets are level and you don't necessarily have to check it with the rocker. What you would then do is wait until later on when the guitar is almost completely finished. You would string up the guitar, you would set the action, tune the strings, set the intonation, then you would play the guitar and you would play the guitar you know, in the sitting position. You could put a strap on it and play it while standing, but you're gonna check each string, or check, yeah, check each string at each fret moving all the way up the fretboard. And you're gonna be listening for fret buzz. Now I would recommend you play the guitar acoustically. Don't plug it into an amp. Play it acoustically and listen for that buzz. And if you notice some, some buzz, you'll know that one of the frets ab above where you're actually fretting the note when you first hear that buzz is probably gonna have a high spot. So then you can take your fret rocker and check to see which of those frets might be the one that's causing the fret buzz, which one has the high spot. Then you can go in and uh, address that fret by doing some spot leveling. So I hope that answers the question about what exactly you're looking for when you use a fret rocker. Are you looking for high frets or are you looking for low frets? because in truth, you're only looking for high frets. And the reason is you can't fix low frets. The only way you can fix a low fret is to make all the other frets the same height as that low fret. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, and I hope that you uh, will find this video to be useful and will give you some food for thought and whatever uh, uh, questions you might have, be sure to post them down in the comment section below. And that's where we all can learn about these processes of guitar building. So uh, until the next episode, as always, uh, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back for future episodes.